Hey guys, it's Leviatros. I recently saw Strange Darling, but is this a movie that's strange in an endearing way, or better to stay away from? Now, as usual, I won't be going into any spoilers or things that I wouldn't want to know myself before seeing the film until after a very clear spoiler warning. Now, to give my thoughts overall of the film, I thought it was pretty good. Like, I think it's worth watching and interesting premise, but I will say I feel like the execution of it isn't always consistently great. That kind of limits it from being something I recommend to everyone in general. But I will say, if you've seen the trailer and it seems intriguing, or you think that the concept of the film is interesting, I think it's worth watching. Just know that some of it might be weaker in areas than the rest of it. Now, to kind of talk about the premise of the film, because this isn't a typical, straightforward movie. When you start watching the movie, the opening, like the first minute of the film, is the woman running towards the camera, it has opening credits, and it's like, whatever actress as, the lady, and whoever as, the demon. And it's already kind of interesting that it's very, like, older style of presentation with, like, these opening credits. And this guy, like, hunting this woman with this, like, kind of almost romantic rock music playing. And then it says, well, at the very beginning, it says all shot on 35 millimeter film, which is also something that's kind of interesting and nice to have. And then it says, presents Strange Darling, a story in six chapters. And then it goes, chapter three. And it's like, oh, so the movie starts like a third of the way through the story overall and then it like it jumps between different chapters so i thought that was really interesting and it is used pr pretty well watching it overall i feel like there's one or two chapters that aren't as strong as the rest of them but like i said i think it's overall worth watching just want to clarify that so that if you're not if you're kind of already like mm, i'm not sure about it if i want to see it then just know that it's not something that's consistently great, like consistently great execution, but it is interesting, I think worth watching if that sounds appealing to you. Like when it comes to nonlinear films, the first example I can think of is Memento and then Pulp Fiction's the second. I feel like those movies, it is also an interesting premise that it's not presented in a linear fashion, but it's also really solid execution. That's kind of like, even if people aren't particularly into these like indie kind of artsy movies, I feel like that's still a pretty good recommendation for people. With Strange Darling, I feel like it's something that is interesting, but it's kind of like you need to verify that they're up for a kind of like artsy, different type of movie before recommending it. But like I said, I think it's definitely worth watching if that sounds interesting to you, and I'm glad that I saw it, but there is a little bit of a caveat. So I think that's about all I want to say before getting to spoilers and more specifics of the film. So here's the spoiler warning. If you don't want to know anything else before seeing the movie, then now's the time to exit. Three, two, one. All right, let's get into the spoilers. So thinking of the movie overall, I think when I refer to things that's like some of the chapters felt a little weaker, the main thing that sticks out to me, I think the weakest part of it was chapter one. And I think that's because you start off with seeing them like the woman's being hunted and you don't know why. And then chapter one, they have the whole chapter is kind of like them, like they've already met, which it's kind of, kind of like, I would have liked to know how they met. But that aside, you see them like interacting that they're going to like sleep together. And there's this like big kind of like back and forward of like, hey, it's going to be like role play. That's like, you're, you don't want you like, I'm going to be mean, but I'm actually acting. And then you see it happening and it seems like, oh, he is like just going overboard like beyond that and then they do the reveal that's like it cuts back to them talking about it. it's like oh this is like what you saw was still part of the plan that they agree to and i feel like that could work like there's potential there but i feel like the execution of it wasn't very strong and i think part of the issue is that this is a little bit too late into the movie that if it was like if it started with chapter one and we're seeing them like go back and forth that's like oh actually this is part of the act still it could still be, I think it could be more likely to work, but I feel like when you're already seeing like, okay, what's actually going on? And then they kind of do more of like flip-flopping. I feel like at that point, we're too far into the movie that we're seeking clarification more so than like entertainment from it flip-flopping. Beyond that, I kind of feel like the, just the execution of that scene wasn't really strong enough to be like, yeah, that's a good scene. So I felt like that was kind of the most disappointing part of the movie, but overall, I felt like it was really good. And, like, there are good moments where it does flip that, like, you see chapter three and five, where it's her, like, 
it seems pretty straightforward that she's running away from the guy he's trying to kill her and like even see him like doing cocaine while driving the truck after her but then chapter four you kind of see that's not that as clear as it seemed to be when she's in the kitchen and she's like no no please please and he's by the window that i can see i'm like oh he's about to get shot by the guy and it cuts away cuts away to the wife getting medicine and she comes back and finds that the woman stabbed the the mountain man husband and it's like oh okay so now it's like now it's not as clear as it was before i felt like that really worked but i felt like in chapter one when they kind of tried to keep going with it and it's kind of like ah haha actually we're kidding it's kind of like all right we're kind of too far into it i would like some clarity though and i felt like chapter four is actually kind of my favorite one because there's that scene that's an interesting like premise but also it starts with like the cooking scene of the mountain people like cooking the meal that starts with an entire stick of butter in the pan to cook eggs and then they make like the whole like pancake sandwich and then they add more bits of butter on top of it and like all the toppings all the syrup and like even whipped cream that was like okay this like i wasn't expecting this but this is pretty entertaining and then also the part that they're doing the puzzle and like that whole game that they have that's still kind of like i don't know what the rules are but then later on she's like what's that and he's like oh it's whoever it's a puzzle to give out for free and stuff like that and she's like no the the food he's like oh that's sunday breakfast help yourself like that moment was really funny and then also when they're talking about like are you sure it's a man going after you and not no don't say it and she's like what a sasquatch and she's like no it wasn't a sasquatch he was driving a truck and the woman's like sasquatch can't drive no truck i was like okay this is really funny and it's something that's a bit odd and kind of risky to execute but did really well so i feel like the beginning chapter one was kind of trying to do a little bit of a similar thing but i feel like it didn't quite land with me I haven't talked with anyone else that's seen the movie, so I don't know if that's a consistent feeling or just me, but that's kind of something that I feel like is a little limiting overall. But overall, I think it's really worth watching and I enjoyed it. And I will say, though, another issue that I kind of have with it is that the ending, like, they talk about the electric lady and both RJ, I think his name is, I can't remember, it's like two letters, the first one's R, and then the other officer at the end asks, are you actually the electric lady? And they never explain what that means. And I felt confused by that and would have liked it to be clarified. I didn't know if it was something like it's a reference outside of the movie that means something. And trying to look it up, the only result I can really find is that there's an album by Janelle Monet called The Electric Lady. But that's the title of the album, not a song. And so I don't I haven't listened to the entire album to figure out if it explains who the electric lady is. But I felt like that's something that I would have liked to have explained, and it just kind of feels like they set it up, but it, it never gets paid off. And to compare it to Pulp Fiction again, I kind of feel like, similarly, they have the case that's like this like golden light, but they never show or explain what's in the case. And when you see Pulp Fiction, it's kind of like, oh, I would like to know what that is, but it doesn't feel disappointing that they don't explain it. It's still like, yeah, that was a really good movie, and like I feel entertained. And with this movie, I kind of feel like it's not strong enough to be like, yeah, they didn't explain this thing, but I don't mind. I still really enjoy that solid film. It's kind of like with some of the uneven execution, I it kind of makes it questionable if that's necessarily intentional. That's like, hey, let's not explain this thing. And that's like the right call. Or if it's kind of like, I don't know if they just didn't know where to go with that or if they just kind of wanted to add that because it sounds cool. And it's just something that feels a little disappointing after seeing the movie and leaving the theater and to kind of finish up my last two points of things that i kind of didn't really like about the film i did think it was interesting that she has like these visions and mentions that she, sometimes she just sees people as demons and that makes it easier to kill them but in the end of chapter one she kisses the guy for the first time and you see like these flashes of like visions and i imagine it's her seeing him as a demon but the way without without enough context i assumed that she has something that when she makes like skin contact with someone she can see their past and so i think intentionally it leads you to believe that the end of chapter one they kiss and she kind of gets visions of his past of like being a serial killer and knows that she's kind of like oh now i'm in trouble but like plays it off but having seen the movie now and that she mentions she sees people as demons but the guy's not a serial killer but she kind of is it kind of just feels confusing as to what the visions meant when they kissed. And it felt like it made sense when they first show it. But then now, having seen the movie, it feels like it just feels confusing now. 
And the final thing that I felt like it was a little disappointing is that near the end of the movie, she's like handcuffed to the big like freezer chest and he's standing outside of it and she has the bear spray and she like sprays in the eyes. He gets closer and she like bites his neck and kills him. But it just felt like why like bear spray is something that's famous for making someone go away from you. So when he gets sprayed, it's kind of like, why would he walk towards her when he's like being blinded and walking towards the source of what's blinding him? It just felt like naturally you would walk away from it and that would prevent the outcome that happened. But it just kind of felt a little bit disappointing, especially since this is the ending of their conflict. The thing that like we've basically been watching the whole time. So that moment felt a bit disappointing. They, it doesn't exactly leave on that note because there's also an epilogue of like what happens after that. It was a little bit satisfying to like she gets shot and it sounds like, okay, she's either going to die or at least get arrested and be held responsible for what she's done. So that ending, it did kind of feel a little more like, okay, like it's a bit more satisfying. That's not like, oh man, she got away and like stuff like that. But, you know, I think overall I enjoy the movie and there were some really strong moments and definitely an interesting premise. And like I said, some of the chapters are like really solid. I really enjoy the execution of it. I just feel like there's a few parts that really felt lacking or that I would like to know more about. So that's kind of what prevents it from being a strong recommendation to like just kind of anyone in general and kind of has to have a little bit of confirmation that they would be up for that type of film. But I really like that they went with this concept of telling a story in six chapters out of order that they jump around and the way that as it's being revealed, it kind of changes the interpretation of the previous chapters. I really enjoyed that and that they took this kind of unique, challenging concept to storytelling. And so really glad that I've seen the movie. And like I said, even though it's not always super consistent throughout the entire film, I really enjoyed it overall and glad I saw it. So that's going to wrap up my thoughts on Strange Darling. If you've watched the video this far, then thank you. I really appreciate it. I definitely want to do more movie reviews and kind of get more into the routine, the balance of kind of going without a script, but not rambling too long about specific points and working towards finding that balance. By the way, thanks for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time.